Hello everyone and welcome to the first video in 2023. Today we are going to look at the solution of the challenge that we shared last week. Let's start by having a look on the challenge itself. On the left hand side I have a table containing six products and I have the prices came in the offers of three vendors. So for product one I have 7.9, 8.9 and 14.9 as a price from three different vendors and so on and so forth for the rest of the products. Using Power Query, I need to identify the minimum price for each product and also to identify the name of the vendor provided the lowest price. Actually, I received a number of good solutions. Part of them was depending on the MCode functions, especially record functions. The other part was depending on user interface and I'm going to divide my video into two sections. In the first section, I'm going to show you how to solve this challenge using mcode functions. And in the second part, I'm going to show a collection of the best solutions received. It is not a complete solution came from one of the participants. However, it is a mix or a collection of the best techniques that I received from you. Let's go back to Excel and look at the first section together. The table already loaded into Power Query. I have only one step, which is basically the source. And I gave a name to the query record function because in the second part, I'm going to explain how to do the user interface. So let's think together what we need to do. We need to add a couple of columns. The first one containing the lowest price and the second column will contain the name of the selected vendor. In order to add a new column, I'm going to the add column ribbon and on the left hand side custom column this will trigger the custom column window let me give a name for this column i'm going to call it lowest price and then let's think how we can get the lowest price the prices is coming in these three columns vendor one vendor two and vendor three so i can form a list containing these three prices and then try to get the lowest price using the list.min function in order to do so, I'm going to open a query bracket. I'm going to select the first column, double click and then comma. Second column, double click and comma. Vendor three and then close the query bracket and then click on OK. And let's see what we'll have. We'll have a list containing the three prices for each and every line of our table. Now I need to get the lowest price. I'm going to edit the add custom step. I'm going to use the list.min function list.min and then open a bracket and then close the bracket at the end and click on OK and here you go you have the lowest price for each and every product let's try to edit again and I think we have a problem here the problem is that I have these three columns hard coded inside the code so whenever I have a new column or a new vendor I need to go back to the query and manually update this code. Let's try to think differently. I'm going to delete the entire code and I'm going to use a shortcut for the entire record. I need some sort of a shorthand or shortcut to extract the entire record or the entire row of this table. In order to do so, I'm going to write only an underscore and then I'm going to click on OK and let's see what will happen. In the new column, I have record in each and every row. If you check any of these records, you will find that it contains the entire record of the table. So I have the name of the product. Then I have vendor one, vendor two, vendor three. If I add more columns to this table, again, the shorthand will help me to get the entire record. So the underscore is a shorthand. I can use it to replace a record. Sometime you can use it to replace a table. Depends on the context or depends on the code that you are using. I think so far so good. Let's think what I need to get from this record. I need to convert this record into a list. In order to do so, I'm going to use a function called record.toList. So I'm going to type record and then dot to list. Open a bracket and close it just after the underscore and then click on OK. And here you go you have a list inside each and every line of this new column. I can check. Now you have the name of the product and all the prices inside the three columns 
of the vendors. Let me edit once more. I need to skip the first record. So I can just use list.skip, open and close a bracket, and click on OK. And here you go. I have the list of the numbers only, excluding the text coming in the first column, which is basically the name of the product. The last edit, I can just add list.min, open and close a bracket and the end, and click on OK. Now we have the lowest price, and we need to add another column in order to specify which vendor provided this lowest price. So I need to add another column, but before adding this column, let's think how we can do this. I need to specify this price, and then I need to search inside each and every column before the last column, and identify the position of the lowest price, and then extract the name of the vendor. In this case, 7.9, it belongs to vendor 1. I need to search in each and every value, starting from product 1 up to the last value. And whenever I find matching, which is basically will be at vendor 1, then I can extract vendor 1. In order to do so, I'm going to add another column. So from add column ribbon, I'm going to use custom column once more. And let me give it a name like selected vendor. And this time, I'm going to start by extracting the names of the headers. In order to extract the names of the headers, I can also use a record function. This time, the function will be called record.fieldNames. Open a bracket and then underscore, underscore again. It will represent the shorthand for the entire record. Then I'm going to close the bracket and click on OK. And here you go, I can find a list of the names of the headers, starting from product name up to lowest price. I can now try to find the correspondent vendor based on the search that I'm going to do right now. Let me edit once more. I'm going to stop working with this function, so I'm going to use double forward slash. This will convert the color of the line to green. And then I can start to write a new code, and I'm going to use this function later. So this time, I'm going to try to search the value 7.9 inside the entire row. So I'm going to start by again once more converting the values into a list, the values of the record into a list, and then I'm going to use the list.positionOf function. I'm going to start by writing list.positionOf, Open a bracket and look into the requirements of this function. The first requirement will be a list. In this case, the list will be the conversion of the entire row into a list. Again, I'm going to use the function record.toList and I'm going to open a bracket and I'm going to use again the underscore and close a bracket. So I'm going to add a comma and the second requirement will be the value that I want to search for. In this case, it will be the lowest price coming in the last column. And then close the bracket. And let's try to click on OK and see what will happen. What I got here, a new column containing a position. In the first row, position number one, number three, number two. Let's check the first line, the position number one. I have a record converted into a list. And this list starting from product one. Product one is exactly the position number zero because the list starting from position zero and then the second position will be number one, which is basically the value I'm searching for. So the position one is perfectly correct. Now I'm going to edit once more. I'm going to cancel the double forward slash and I'm going to use the curly bracket just before the list of position. So I'm telling Power Query, please use this list of names and extract the position coming from the list dot position of function and i'm going to click on ok and here you go i have the name of the vendors exactly like what i want let me rename these steps this one will be rename and selected vendor this one will be right click and rename minimum price and i'm ready to load home close and load close and load to I'm going to select existing worksheet and table and I'm going to select column K and click on OK. And here you go. You have your table. Let me try to add a new vendor. Control C and Control V. My query right click and refresh. And here you go. You have the new column added and the calculation now is updated based on the new input. <laughs> Thank you.
The table loaded once more to Power Query. I gave a new name to the query user interface. And let's think how we can do this together. The idea is depending on unpivot and then group by. So I'm going to convert these columns into rows using the unpivot function. And then I'm going to use group by in order to identify the lowest price. In order to unpivot, I'm going to select the only column that I don't want to unpivot and then right click and then unpivot other column. And here you go. I have only three columns in this table, one column for the product, one column for the vendors, and one column for the prices. I can just rename these columns. I can just do it from the formula bar. I'm going to change the default name attribute into selected vendor, and the value I'm going to change to lowest price. Now I need to identify the lowest price for each and every product. I can do this using the group by functionality. So I'm going to select again the product name column, right click and I'm going to click group by. This will open the window for the group by. I'm going to use basic because it's only one column used for grouping. I'm going to give this any name. Let me call it price. And then the operation I can just choose from the standard operations. I have some average, median, min. I'm going to select the min. And then the column that I'm going to use for the operation in this case will be for sure the lowest price. And then I'm going to click on OK. And here you go. You have a list of the products and the lowest prices. Now let's think together. Can I get the lowest price together with the name of the vendor in one go? I can do that. Yes, I think we can do that, but we need to do some changes into the group by operation, which is basically done through the table.group function. Let's have a look on the code in the formula bar. I have the function table.group. The first requirement is the name of the table, which is basically a reference to the previous step, unpivot other column. And then the name of the column that I'm going to use to group by, which is basically the product name column. And then inside couple of curly brackets, I have the operation that I'm going to do in order to do the grouping. At the beginning, I'm giving the name for the new column. You can see I give the name price. No problem. I can give any name. And then each and after the each, I have the operation or I have the function that's going to do the grouping. In this case, I have the list.min. We just use it in the previous example. And that's why the input for list.min is only one column. When you give a column name inside two square brackets, meaning that you are providing a list. That's why the function is list.min. But now I need to give a table instead of a list. So I need to change the function to be table.min instead of list.min. So I'm going to type table. And instead of providing a list, I need to provide a table. So I'm going to delete and I'm going to replace it by something different. In this case, it will be again the underscore. I told you at the beginning, the underscore can represent a record and sometime it can represent a table. When I use table.min, the underscore for sure will represent a table. Which table? The table that should have been here when I'm grouping all the rows for product one, all the rows for product two, and all the rows for product three, and so on and so forth. Table.min requires another requirement. If I add a comma, the second requirement or the second argument will be the criteria. The criteria in this case will be coming from the column lowest price. So inside double quote, I'm going to type lowest price. Let's try to read this again. I'm giving table.min a table, which is basically a table containing three columns, the original table before doing the grouping. And for each and every group, I need the lowest price coming from the column lowest price. And at the end, you can see that type is number. And if I leave it like this, it won't work. So I need to change the type number into type record. Why type record? Because this function will extract an entire row of each and every table. So the suitable type will be record. Let me hit the check mark and see what will happen. And instead of having the lowest price, I have multiple records in each and every line. If you check any of these records, you will find product one, vendor one, 7.9, the name of the vendor together with the lowest price. The very next step is just to expand this record. I can just use the double arrow button in order to expand. Don't forget to uncheck use original column name as prefix. 
I have all the columns here, all the fields here. Product name, selected vendor, and lowest price. I'm going to uncheck product name because I already have it inside this table and then click on OK. And here you go. You have the name of the product. You have the selected vendor and the lowest price. If you remember the format or the structure of this table, I'm going back to the previous example. You will find that I have the lowest price before the selected vendor. So I need to do the reorder. In order to do it in a dynamic way, I'm going to amend the code inside the formula bar, the code for table to expand record column. And let's have a look on the code together. It is telling that I need to expand a record inside a column. This is the name of the function. And then it gives the name of the table, which is basically a reference to the previous step. And then the name of the column, the original column used to be price. Check here. I have here the column containing the records. It called price, so it's giving the name of the column. And then inside curly brackets, I have all the columns that I need to expand. Again, I have another time the name of the columns. The first list containing the original names and the second set containing the new names. In my case, I can just delete this part because it is optional. I can just use the old names as new names. In this case, if I reverse the order between selected vendor and the lowest price inside this list, it will reverse the position of the column. So I'm going to select Control X to cut and then comma Control V to paste. And here you go. And you can find that I managed to reverse the order of these two columns. Now I think we received a very good result. I can just load this table like this. But what if I need to rebuild the table to match the structure that I have in the previous example? This means that I need to bring all the columns back, the columns that grouped at the previous steps, I need to bring them back inside this table. Actually, I saw a lot of solutions. Part of this solution was just creating a copy of the original query and do a merge between the two queries. In my solution, I selected to show you how can I merge inside the same query, meaning that this table you can see here, I'm going to merge with a previous table or a previous step and this will basically the source step. In order to do so, I'm going to use the same function that's used inside the merge that you are doing using the user interface. The user interface here won't help you. You need to write the function yourself. So I'm going to fx in order to add a new step and I'm going to delete everything and I'm going to start by writing the function. The function will be table.nested join. Then I'm going to open a bracket and look into the screen tip and try to find what exactly required. It requires the first table. Where is the first table? In my case, I'm going to start by the source because if you remember the order, it will start by the original table and then the additional two columns, which is basically lowest price and selected vendor. So in my case, the first argument, table number one will be source, which is basically a reference to the source step. Then comma, the second requirement will be Key one. Key one will be basically the column that I'm going to use for the matching. In this case, the column will be the product name, as you can see obviously here. So inside double quotes, I'm going to write product name and then comma. For the third argument, I need table two. Table two will be the previous step, which is basically expanded price. Because it's written with a space, I need to use the hash pound and then double quote. I can select from the drop down. The first choice is expanded price. Here is the second table, comma. The key for the second table will be basically also product name. So I'm going to use double quotes and I'm going to write product name and then comma. The fifth argument, the name of the new column. This will come, the merge will come in a new column. So I'm going to give it any name. Let's say merge and then comma. The final argument will be the join kind. I'm going to use the left outer. So I'm going to write left outer and you'll find a function called join kind dot left outer. This will tell the table dot nested join to use the left outer join kind. Now I'm ready. I can just use the check mark and here you go. You have all the columns of the source step as you can see here. And at the end, you have a new column. If you check any table inside this column, it just contains the column coming from the previous step expanded price, which is basically product name, lowest price and selected vendor. I can expand this step. I already have the product name. I can just uncheck and then click on OK. And here you go. Same structure and same order 
everything is working perfectly but just a quick note you will find that i have how many steps one two three four five steps after the source if you check the record function it is just two steps after the source so i think it's a bit lengthy a bit complicated if you compare it to the record functions solutions now i'm ready to load close and load close and load two again i'm going to use existing worksheet and table and i can just use a column like s and click on ok and here you go if you check both tables are identical let me try to add the fifth vendor Control c and Control v now i can just go to data and refresh all here you go both table expanded i have vendor number five and all the calculation identical between two tables and all updated with the fifth vendor let me try to add a couple of lines product seven and product eight Control v again data refresh all both table expanded and both table are calculating perfectly the favorite part of the video the hall of fame a very big thank you for each and every one participated in this challenge actually i'm so pleased this time because i saw new names came to the challenge so let me start by walid al hassan Fathi Taha, Alejandro Simon, Shihab al Sagir, Ayman Abu Magd, Anthony Sovi, Mahmoud Bani Asadi, Josh Excel, John Rushdi, Mr. Samir Tubail, Mohammed Tambawala, Adriel DS, Roy Wilson, Usman Abu Ziyad, Ziyad Sharaf Shamsan, Levi Tamaj, and Engineer Zakaria Abu Harun. Thank you very much for each and every one. I hope that was useful for you. See you in the next challenge and bye.